Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm making a really simple soap, an unscented creamy goat milk soap. And that's it. The tweak is I'm going to put a little extra cocoa butter in this goat milk soap just to add some more extra moisture and goodness. And to make it interesting, it doesn't have to be super plain, I am going to do a red clay, this is just a red kale and clay um, swirl. Just a little, add some prettiness to it, plus uh, clay is wonderful in soap. I love it. I love how it makes the lather feel. It's good for your skin. So I'm going to do white kaolin and the red clay. Uh, unscented, like I said, goat milk. I'm going to use Tussa Silk Fibers in here, uh, an extra cocoa butter. It's just going to be wonderful. Just pure and moisturizing and great. Um, and again, full disclosure, this is a bar of soap. I think the ingredients are divine, but this soap will get you clean. So I'm going to pull everything together. Let's come back and just make some wonderful plain goat milk soap. And if you enjoy watching my videos, please hit the like button and subscribe and the bell for notifications. And I'm on Instagram and Facebook too. Okay, I've got all the oils here prepped for our creamy goat milk soap. Um, since this is going to be unscented, there's no fragrance in here, but I put extra cocoa butter in this. I just wanted this to be super rich and luxurious. So to this, I'm going to add my additives, which will be my organic colloidal oats and my kale and clay and then um, after we get the goat milk lye solution in I'll go ahead and split off for my red clay just for a little color swirl just because it's unscented and simple doesn't mean it ha can't be pretty and have a little swirl to it so and that red clay just adds another level of goodness to it so um, I'm going to go ahead and get these blended in and let them kind of anchor into the oils here and absorb what they're going to absorb before we get moving on to our goat milk solution. <laughs> back and uh, everything's within 10 degrees of each other here and I've got my creamy goat milk lye solution which does have tussa silk fibers about um, a quarter teaspoon of titanium dioxide to knock down the yellowing and some sodium lactate and all of my additives are absorbed in here so let's get these two blended together oh yeah and I forgot <laughs> almost forgot to tell you um I put in a tablespoon of powdered sugar into my goat milk solution, dissolved it before I added the lye in there. So there's some sugar in here too, just to help the bubbles come along. So let's go ahead and get this poured in. Simple goodness. It's so funny. I make these unscented bars and um, it's like feast or famine with them. They'll sit and sit and I'm like, oh brother, they're not selling and then I'll just sell out. And then people are like, where's the unscented soap? And I feel so bad. Um, so they're not consistent sellers, but when they go, they go. So I'm just gonna give this a quick blend uh, just to get emulsion and we'll split off for our clay portion. And when I do stick blending, I'm just doing bursts. So I'm stirring it by hand and then I'll just do a little burst. So I'm not stick blending this entire time. But, uh, it brings it to emulsion nice and fast this way. There we go. And we'll pour off for our red clay portion. That looks good. We'll just do a nice big rounded teaspoon. So I'm just going to blend this a little more to get it up to trace and then we'll blend that in before I move my stick blender over to the colored side there. Sometimes I forget and I'll do the dark colors with my stick blender and then I've got to go clean it off and it's a hassle. It's always good to remember to go lightest to darkest with your stick blender and then you don't have to clean it in between. All right, so nice light trace on there. Let's hop over here to our red clay. a nice soft gentle color but again the clays are so good for you and I love the um, feel that they give a lather. Let's go ahead and get our mold over. Got a few drips here. There we go. All 
right. And let's just do a drop swirl and then I will run my hanger through this. the next day it's been about well 18 to 24 hours and I did put a blanket over this and let it go through gel phase uh, even though this had sugar in there and the milk I just kept an eye on it and kept pe peeking in making sure that it wasn't uh, getting too hot and all that stuff so I think it did great let's get it out of the mold here and run it through the slab cutter this is uh, my workshop heritage mold uh, this is the tall skinny double and I mostly uh, I use the triple but today for this unscented bar I decided to use the double so let's get this out and also I need to tighten the string up on my splitter without popping a string <laughs> I always cringe a little when I do that I'm like I know oh. I can't stand like balloon popping or um, strings, guitar strings snapping. That stuff just makes me cringe and uh, not. I don't like it. <laughs> All right, here is our beautiful, and that red clay is just so muted and lovely. So let's get this in here and split it. Got to tighten the wire on here also. Actually, speaking of guitar wires popping, this is a guitar wire that they use on here. Um, and I've had this cutter for probably three years and I just broke a wire on it. I had something with melt and pour embeds and um, popped the wire. So it, it, was, it stood up for a long time before it finally popped and I had to replace it. So this is my little sample piece. Oh, those swirls came out lovely. You know, sometimes simple is just really good. You don't need to overstate everything. I mean, I love doing fancy, sparkly, twinkly soaps, but once in a while, just a really plain, simple soap, I think, is beautiful. It speaks for itself. That's a nice swirl. I'm happy with how that came out. I get asked a lot how I stamp my soaps, so I'm going to show you how I do it. I got this 
stamp from a fellow on Etsy and I'll leave the link in the description box below and this is made for soap it has a little bit higher rise to the lettering on it um, and it's a, just a hard resin mounted on wood and what I do is I take my rubbing alcohol and I just mist it and that helps release it and the alcohol evaporates really quickly so it doesn't affect the soap at all and I just get it centered up and give it a tap now this soap is relatively soft I made it yesterday so just one little tap will do if I get busy and have to wait a few days sometimes it'll take a couple of taps it's just kind of a feeling you you just you can tell how deep down it sinks in here let me show you this one and I like it if you get it too deep it can cause um, you know mushing up of the soap and if it's too shallow you can't read it so this is about the level I like to do it so I'll show you again just spritz it and center and tap and it's probably soft enough where if I wanted to I could just press this in but I like my little hammer I feel like it's a little more precision gets a nice even tap all the way through and I can get about three or four soaps and then I like to spritz it again now these are tall skinny soaps so I've been doing my stamps on the side when I do a standard size bar I have to put my stamp on the front because uh, they're not tall enough for my stamp it depends on what your logo is and how big it is but that's what works for me tall skinny gets it on the side standard size gets it on the front and there it is have a great day